no, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not, I'm not, no. No, I just started the speech. Why would you think I'm done? Welcome to Ms. Mojo Glow. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest things to happen at award shows. Number 10. James Earl Jones Gets Slimed 7th Annual Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards Producer Albie Hecht envisioned an opening with a dressed-up James Earl Jones getting slimed at the Pantages Theatre. The revered actor politely declined and hung up. Minutes later, Hecht got a call back from Jones, saying that his granddaughters convinced him to do the sliming, calling it, quote, the biggest honor he could have. Who will be honored tonight? I don't know. Number 9. Tom Cruise and Simon Pegg Take Brad Bird Hostage 38th Annie Awards Brad Bird rose to fame with animated classics like The Iron Giant, The Incredibles, and Ratatouille. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol marked his foray into live action. That same year, he received the Windsor McKay Award. In a pre-recorded speech, Bird announced his plans for a career shift. The camera eventually pushed out to reveal Bird being held hostage by his own film stars. If some nerd with a paintbrush or a computer could replace Place the likes of award-winning international superstar Tom Cruise and the similarly award-winning British comedy genius Simon Pegg, uh, such notions are absurd. And Number 8. Will Ferrell Drops Award – Mark Twain Prize for American Humor The Mark Twain Prize is one of the highest honors in comedy that only a select few have received. Will Ferrell became the 14th person to join this exclusive club in 2011. And how did Ferrell commemorate this achievement? He dropped the bronze bust on stage, bringing the audience and music to an abrupt halt. The cheers were substituted with laughter as Ferrell attempted to piece the shattered statue back together. While the stunt was pre-planned, the execution demonstrates why Farrell deserved this prize. I will find a place of honor in my house for this magnificent bust. <laughs> Number 7. Conan Invades Television 58th Primetime Emmy Awards Host Conan O'Brien invaded several shows. Crash landing on a familiar island, Conan heads down to the hatch. Inside, he doesn't find Desmond, but Dwight, Jim, and the rest of Dunder Mifflin. Damn it, Jim! No. I did not have Conan O'Brien fall through the ceiling. From there, Conan gets stuck on the phone with Jack Bauer, receives an examination from House, and becomes trapped in the closet with Tom Cruise. Conan winds up on To Catch a Predator before finally making it to the Emmys. Welcome to the hoedown. Thank you very much. Number 6. Rebel Wilson on a Catastrophe 73rd British Academy Film Awards Released during awards season, Universal had hopes that Cats might be their ticket to the Oscars. Instead, the musical bomb won six Razzies, including Worst Picture. Although Rebel Wilson would share in those Razzie wins, she had a great sense of humor about the film's failure at the BAFTAs. Wilson didn't seem too displeased that the BAFTAs didn't nominate Cats, but she voiced concern over the lack of feline representation among those who were honored. Okay, even in this best director cat agory, <laughs> no felines have been nominated. Number five. Any of Tina and Amy's monologues, Golden Globe Awards. During their first year, the hosts implied that they'd be nicer than Ricky Gervais. That quickly went out the window as they proved they had shade to spare. The following year, Faye and Puller poked fun at George Clooney's reputation for dating younger women. They targeted Clooney again during their third year, arguing that Amal is more accomplished than her husband. Amal is a human rights lawyer who worked on the Enron case, was an advisor to Kofi Annan regarding Syria, and was selected for a three-person UN commission investigating rules of war violations in the Gaza Strip. So tonight, her husband is getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. Number 4. Steve Carell and Ricky Gervais Emmy Feud 59th Primetime Emmy Awards and 60th Primetime Emmy Awards Carell infamously never won an Emmy for his performance as Michael Scott, but when Ricky Gervais snagged the award for his work in extras, Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert provided a loophole. Ricky Gervais couldn't be here tonight, so instead we're going to give this to our friend Steve Carell. The following year, Gervais did attend the 
Emmys, and he didn't shy away from Carell stealing his award. Gervais roasted a stone-faced Carell in the audience, making fun of Evan Almighty and forcing him to surrender the Emmy. Number three, Soda Pop and Sabotage, Twitch Chat's Choice Awards. There are more than a few flaws with online community voting. A streamer can encourage their legion of followers to vote one way, rigging the awards. This appeared to happen throughout Twitch Chat's Choice Awards, as personality Thomas, Soda Pop, and Morris took credit for influencing the vote during a live stream. You are influencing the vote. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely, I am influencing the votes. The show climaxed with Soda Poppin presenting Game of the Year via video call. Rather than celebrate the nominees, Soda Poppin called it a trash year for games. Although they immobilized his telepresence robot, they couldn't stop Soda Poppin from popping. Number two, Gollum interrupts Andy Serkis, 12th MTV Movie Awards. Andy Serkis's groundbreaking portrayal of Gollum was shoo in for best virtual performance at the MTV Movie Awards. He graciously thanked MTV and the fans in a pre recorded speech. However, his moment was interrupted when Gollum himself showed up. He unleashed a profanity-laced tirade, taking aim at Circus, Peter Jackson, and even fellow digital movie star Dobby the House Elf. The speech proved so precious that it would later win a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. Until sucks with hate to all. But that Number one, Robin Williams turns a loss into a triumph. Eighth Critics' Choice Awards. At the 2003 Critics' Choice Awards, Best Actor went to Daniel Day-Lewis and Jack Nicholson in a tie. The only other nominee was Williams, making it clear who came in last. Claiming to be baked, Nicholson asked Williams to come on stage. We were treated to more than five minutes of classic Robin, complete with impressions, dancing, and brilliant improv. And it's been a, a wonderful evening for me to to walk away with nothing, <laughs> coming here with no expectations, leaving here with no expectations. It's pretty much been a Buddhist evening for me. Thank you. <laughs>